Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. Amy here. Today we're gonna do a little smash up, wrap up, if you will, uh, for September and October since I didn't get to do a September wrap up. Uh, both September and October were very, very low reading months for me, uh, being all what we've been um, dealing with around here. All is good though, everything is fine, daddy is doing great. If you've, um, you know, following along with me, my dad had his, uh, one of his pinky toes, pinky toes, <laughs> uh, amputated. Uh, he has uh, diabetes, he's a really bad type two diabetic. Uh, we're trying to get him to do better. Uh, but anyway, he's doing great. He is doing great. Um, my mom's doing great. She also broke her hand. So, you know, just lots of things going on. Lots of things. <laughs> I've had to kind of like step forward and take care of them, bring them to the doctor. It's been a lot. But um, things are finally starting to settle a little bit. So, today I thought we'd go ahead and just smash up September and October. I'm sad that October flew by so quickly and I, I feel like I didn't really truly get to enjoy it like I don't know I don't know Our, the last week of October we were in Disney so I really did enjoy that we had a great time but once again it it just it's gone like we were looking so forward to it we scheduled this trip like probably over a year ago and could not wait for it and it finally came and now it's gone <laughs> Uh, but anyway, it was it was so much fun. We had a great time. So let's get into the books. So I have a little stack right here of some books that I read. And I also have, um, of course, a list of the uh, Kindle Unlimited books or any books that I read on my tablet uh, in here. It's, it's really, it's not many. I didn't count the total between the two months, but it's probably... The total between these two months is probably like my usual like one month i guess uh because i really i got in such a bad reading slump y'all but i i think i'm out of it i'm really ready to get in back into the flow of things and filming i've missed filming so much of course we'll start at the beginning of september uh the first thing i picked up really uh hello bella uh really kind of set the month of just like my reading slump i think like it i don't know i don't know what happened but anyway i picked up these violent delights i had this book on audible it was part of a buy one get one buy one get one for one credit uh on audible and i picked this one up so i i don't have the physical book but uh, i did end up dnf in this one i i don't even know how far i got i think i tried to get halfway through and it just was not I mean I just could not grasp it there was something about it I felt like it was a little over my head a little bit I don't know I just I wasn't into the story I wasn't into the characters I really wasn't picking up like where where it was going anyway it was it was kind of over my head so um I DNF'd it next I picked up uh physically read feuds and reckless fury by K Webster Okay, now this was a five star. I absolutely loved it. Um, this is a this is a stepbrothers to lovers story, so a little bit of a um, forbidden type of romance. wasn't wasn't as good as Wrath. I mean, Wrath is like my all time favorite, but this this came this came very close. This is Canyon and Alice's story. Is what is his name? This is Canyon and Alistair's story, or Alice, which Canyon ends up to call him his wonderland. Canyon hates his father. Uh, his father sort of um, abandoned their family, I guess. Not not really, but he left his mother uh, for another man, um, his best friend, actually. And uh, they were married, and the, the other man has an adopted son, which is Alistair. Canyon is determined to get into Alistair's head and just ruin him and just like he just hates him. So it's a hate to love relationship that's it starts off as a hate to love relationship but as the two or as Canyon um digs more into Alistair and what really gets on his on his um bad side they they tend to um kind of grow closer 
in a way even though they, they both hate each other they're like drawn to each other canyon is also determined to get back at his dad for like just ruining their family his mom had slipped into like a deep depression but that relationship as well kind of starts to grow a little bit there was a small part at the end um with uh canyon and alistair's fathers that um that kind of annoyed me but uh otherwise i really enjoyed the entirety of the story and uh love these two guys um connection and how they ended up together and the the flow of the relationship how it's just hate to love how they got underneath each other's skin and it, and it was it was sexy it was dark kind of and forbidden and i loved it <laughs> Next, I picked up uh, the third book in the Frat War series by Saxon James. This is Presidential Chaos. I really, okay, five stars, first of all. I loved it. I think I preferred it over the first two. Even though I loved the first two, I think the first one being my favorite over the second one. But um, this one I really liked because it, it dealt more with, it was more of on the serious side. Don't get me wrong. I loved the guys and all their fraternity shenanigans, but um, this relation, this, this book was between the two presidents, Zeke and Charles, excuse Bella in her litter box, um, both presidents of different fraternity houses, and they supposedly have this um, hatred between them. It never fails. It never fails. But in this book, you really get to dive into their relationship, like kind of, kind of like behind the scenes kind of thing. I don't know if I would call it a hate to love, um, because there's something about the two guys that I don't think they hate each other. I don't think they hated each other. It was just that everyone else thought they were supposed to hate each other or that they did hate each other. So yeah, their relationship was really sweet and, um, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't all the shenanigans that came from the other two books. It was a little bit more ser on the serious side as their relationship grew throughout the story. They, they both have, like, different um, outlooks on uh, what they are to become. Um, Zeke is really focusing his on his, like, future career as an Olympic swimmer. So he's really um, busy with that. He doesn't have a lot of time to have a relationship. And then... Um, Charles uh, ha is has fam sort of family issues where the, the his grandfather has you know wants him to like do this certain thing so that's what he's there at school for to become like a lawyer where he really does not want to do that he wants to be like a professor a teacher um, so they they have like their different stories and different backgrounds but um, they really mesh well together. I have written down in my notes uh, the end of us. <laughs> But it's really, uh, it ends with us by Colleen Hoover. My cousin loaned this book to me. Um, so if you're watching, Allison, thank you so much for, for lending me this book. I'm taking very care of it until I can give it back to you. Um, so this is like my first Colleen Hoover that's um, not a thriller. I read Layla and what was the other one? Verity, which I absolutely loved both of them, but I have not dived into one of her romance books. Um, but it has come to my attention that I just love her writing. Like, she can just tell a story. A little trigger warning, uh, this book does deal with domestic abuse, but weirdly or oddly enough, I was actually rooting for all these characters. So we follow Lily. Lily grew up in a little bit of an unstable household. Um, she actually befriended a homeless, um, I'm gonna say kid. It says homeless guy, but uh, they, they were both in high school, I believe. She discovered that he was living in like the abandoned house or the, the available house next door to them and they became friends. Uh, over time and then he ended up leaving uh, you know of course she moves on with her life and she meets Ryle wait what's his name Ryle yeah she meets him he's a neurosurgeon their story ends up to be um, really beautiful story as well as a scary story um, and then later on 
as after they are together and I think married. Did they get married? I think they did get married. It's, it's been a while since I read it. But anyway, um, the homeless kid, our guy, now comes back into her life. Well, she, she actually sees him at a restaurant. Uh, uh, he's doing well for himself as well as she. She has opened up her own business. Um, and they just sort of form a little friendship. And she starts to kind of rely on uh, him when things get a little rough with Ryle. It was a great story. Um, I, I really, I loved all the characters. To me, all the characters were enjoyable, I, even Ryle. I kind of felt sad for him. Um, and I was sort of rooting for him in a way, but uh, rooting for the other guy as well. He has a name, but I, I don't remember it. But yeah, I should have known she was gonna give me a, a good love story, even though it was male-female. You know, I'm the queen of male-male romances over here. Uh, so I very rarely pick up a male-female, but this one was really good. So I do think I might pick up the sequel that has recently uh, been released. So yeah, there you have it. It ends with us. I like it. I gave it four stars. I also listened to that on audio and I really did enjoy the narration as well. Okay, next we have Obeying the Merman by Aramis Jordan. This is where um, every my reading kind of stopped and like took a dive <laughs> into this big black hole that it took me forever to climb out of. It was not the book's fault. It just took me a really long time to, to read this book. It started off with a bang. I loved it. Um, I believe this is the fifth book. I didn't write it down, but I believe it's the fifth book in the Cursed Merman series um, by Aramis Jordan. And I really did enjoy the story. This is the story of the Mer King. And we also have um, a character from a previous book, sort of. He was like a character in the background. He was the brother. He was Christian's brother. Christian, uh, it was Christian and Tarlis's story. Uh, and he was Aaron, Eric is his name. <laughs> I'm trying to remember this all from memory because I'm so far behind on my Goodreads um, reviews and I usually rely on my reviews to kind of refresh my memory but I didn't. <laughs> I'm so far behind. Uh, so anyway, yeah, Eric is Christian's story from a previous book and he he is he is gay. He knows he's gay and he wants his, I guess, his first experience with a man to be um, not necessarily with the Mer King, but he wants to go to the Mer King's court and kind of become one of the consorts, whether, you know, he doesn't think he's going to become the Mer King's consort, but it could be one of the other Mermans that are in the Mer King's realm, could be one of his, their consorts. Um, so, so yeah, so we get the story of the Mer King, which I really, I really enjoy uh, the Mer King. We get a little bit of him in the previous book and I, I knew I couldn't wait for his story. So I really did enjoy the story between Eric and the Mer King. The Mer King has um, a few hand-picked consorts um, and no one else can touch them, only the Mer King. Uh, and Eric becomes one of his consorts. Like I said, it was really good. Of all, in all, mostly all of uh, the books, there is like one long chapter of nothing but sex. And as, as much as I enjoy some good sexy time in a book, sometimes it can get a little much. And, and that's, that's usually seems to be the case in these books. Like it's just drawn out. Um, you know, but whatever, you know, it's great. I'm not, I'm not knocking it. It's just the fact that I kind of, I just, what, I definitely was not in the mood at this time. So I skipped over that, that chapter. I may eventually go back and read it, but I, I just wanted this, the story between Eric and the Mer King. I wanted to see where it goes and where they end up in their story. But I gave it four stars. I really did enjoy it. And um, I'm looking forward to uh, the Sea Witches story, which I believe is next. What are you doing, my Bella? Wow. Really? Is it lunch time? Wow. Yeah, it's lunch time. <laughs> Next up we have Reckless Girls. This is by Rachel Hawkins. This was one of my book of the month picks. This was entertaining. I gave it three stars. It wasn't as good as The Wife Upstairs by Rachel Hawkins. I think I prefer that one over this one. So we follow uh, Lux is our uh, character and her and her boyfriend. Uh, go on this 
excursion, I believe, with a couple other people to um, this certain island. This island is, it has a, um, I believe, like a mysterious history and uh, murders had taken place on this island. Um, and then once they get there, I believe they meet up with other people that are on this island. We also have a timeline in, and here we go uh, before and now is our timeline. So before we have Lux and Nico that are sailing with these other two girls. Um, and I believe there that trip, you know, kind of ends up kind of colliding with the current trip. Um, that they're taking now. I just felt like it took like too long to get to like the the action part of the book or the nitty-gritty or like what was going down. There was it was too much in the middle about the island and all the people and what was what they were doing, what what every day, what, what they would do every day, um, how they spend their evenings kind of thing. It was I mean it was okay, it was entertaining like I said, but then I felt like the ending was a little bit fast and I'm still not sure about the ending like what really happened I, I feel like i wanted more to that story uh but anyway like i said once again it was entertaining i did listen to it on um audio and i did i'm sorry what you okay <laughs> i did enjoy the narration <laughs> you okay back there okay moving on <laughs> Okay, that, those were the books that I read in the month of September. Uh, so we get to October, and I'm like, okay, we're gonna we're gonna do this. It's spooky season. We're gonna jump in with a spooky book. So I pick up the Final Girl Support Group by Grady Hendrix, and I DNF'd it. Like I I couldn't. I just couldn't. I don't know if it was like had anything to do with my slump, or. I don't know. I, I did start listening to it. I, I wasn't really crazy about the narration. Uh, so maybe at a later date, maybe I can try to just read it with my own eyes and see what happens. So yeah, after nine chapters and just really trying to get into it, I, I couldn't. I just had to put it away. And I didn't, I was already in a slump. I didn't want to get any more into a slump. So I just DNF'd it. Like I said, I may go back to it in the future. I don't know. I don't know. We'll we'll see. Tell me in the comments what y'all thought. If any of y'all have read this one by Grady Hendrix, I usually love his book. I love his writing. It's like so much fun, but I just couldn't get into this one. So let me know in the comments um, if you've read it, how you feel. So I tried again. I picked up The Sorority Murder by Allison Brennan. I actually gave this two and a half stars. I did get to the end of it. I listened to this uh, via audio. Uh, the audio was good. It, it, I think that's what kind of kept me going with the story. So this has sort of a, a podcast vibe in it, but it, but, but not really. I guess it's it's about a podcast. Um, Lucas is one of the guys that we're following, and he is he started the podcast. He actually knew um, the girl that was murdered. It was soror a very popular sorority girl named Candace Swain. <laughs> um, once again, I did not write a review, so I, I'm kind of trying to go on off the top of my head. But um, she, her murder is a bit of an unsolved murder. So he decides he's going to do a podcast on her murder to see if he can dive into it and um, see what would actually happen. So it's basically uh, Lucas, and then we also follow, um, I believe, a detective on the case. That, yeah, I believe, yeah, I, and I actually think this is going to be like a series, like a detective series. Am I thinking correctly? I don't know, that, that could be wrong. Anyway, uh, we, we follow her as well um, on try, just basically trying to solve the case and um, putting it out there on the podcast. It was okay, like I said, the, the audio was really good, so I think that's kind of what kept me going with the story. Um, but in the, in the end, I think I was just kind of like, eh, yeah, I kind of figured that out. <laughs> you know, you know how it is. Then I picked up Don't You Dare. Uh, this is by C.E. Ricky. This was sort of my attempt to get out of the, the reading slump, even though, you know, this I finished this one and it wasn't terrible. It still wasn't doing it for me. So I was like, let me just go back to my, you know, my male male romance. Kind of get me out of the slump I'm having. It did take me a while to um, get through this story uh, just because I started reading it at a time where 
uh, I needed to get my my crap together, I guess, and get packing for Disney, and then we left for Disney. I ended up finishing it on the way to Disney. Um, I gave this five stars. I really did enjoy it, and I think it, it did kind of help me get out of that slump. So this is a friends to lovers story between Keen and Aspen. Um, best friends to lovers. Um, they've been best friends since they could probably start walking. Um, in high school, they had a dare to kiss. And ever since then, Keen has sort of had like this feeling that he may have liked it. And he started, he started having feelings for Aspen. But he wasn't quite sure what it was, so he kind of kept them in the back of his mind and kind of kept his distance. Not, not distance distance, but just distance in that sort of sense. Was just there as his friend and his friend only, trying to figure himself out over the years. So they end up going to college together. Uh, Keen is uh, a, base, a baseball player, so he is there playing baseball, and Aspen is there, um, I think he's going for like architectural degree of some sort. He also loves taking pictures, but anyway, that's in the background a little bit. So what gets them sort of to come together is um, another dare takes place, and it's another dare for them to kiss. Keen knows he's not going to be able to do it without these feelings coming back up, so he just like jets. And of course, Aspen wants to know what is wrong. So he, in, Keen ends up telling Aspen about, you know, what happened all those years ago in high school. And, you know, he's having these feelings and he thinks he may be gay or may, possibly bi. Because uh, he has been with women. Um, but he does want to explore these feelings. So he's, you know, creates an, an account like on, you know, a hookup app or whatever. But Aspen's like does another dare on him and dares him to experiment with him to see, to make, you know, to make sure that he uh, is bisexual. Um, so yeah, that's, that's kind of how the relationship starts and Aspen learns that he enjoys being with Keen and helping him discover himself is he also discovering something about himself. Um, so yeah, it was fun, um, watch or watching them or listening to them or reading them <laughs> sort of, um, experiment on each other. It was really sweet. Uh, I loved their friendship and then a little bit more later on in the book. So, so yeah, five stars. Uh, I loved it. I actually almost forgot I read this next book. This is Chloe Cates is Missing. Uh, this is by Mandy McHugh. Uh, I did listen to this uh, via Audible. Once again, it was like one of those buy one, get one with one credit, uh, two for one kind of thing uh, on Audible. And the narration was read by a cast of characters. And I love when a cast of characters narrates uh, a book. Her mother start started a blog when she was, when, when Chloe was just a baby and it has sort of bl blown up. So she is somewhat of a, a famous, star uh, from this from this blog. It's really hard to explain this book. Um, it's, it's basically, I, I feel like it was kind of about um, the re relationship between the mother and the daughter and this blog. It was like this blog was sort of like in the middle of that relationship and as as well as like other family members as well like Chloe's dad and, and as well as her brother. It's sort of this blog sort of takes or has taken over their lives and more so the mother because like all she can think about is how she's going to present this on the blog when Chloe goes missing. It was interesting. I really enjoyed it. The narration was absolutely amazing. I gave it a four and a half stars. There was something about it that wasn't quite five stars for me, but yeah, definitely four and a half stars. Uh, I, like I said, I just, I just enjoyed the whole uh, experience of it via through listening to it. Um, so I do highly recommend the audio if you have access to it. Um, but yeah, overall I enjoyed it. Then we have Rock Solid by uh, Riley Hart. Once again, two for one sale on Audible. So I did listen to this via Audible. Um, this is a male male romance. I gave this three stars. It was okay. It was, uh, I don't even know if I remember their names. Trevor and Simon were their names. Trevor, um, he is, has a troubled past. He was a, um, a drug addict as well as an alcohol abuser. 
Uh, so he's like kind of out of rehab. He starts, he's starting a business with his brother, Rock Solid. They are construction workers. Uh, then we have Simon who was a heart surgeon and uh, he also has a little bit of a tra traumatic past where his hand got hurt so he cannot perform surgery anymore. So he's a bit of a grump um, and he hires Rock Solid to do some construction on a new home that he's purchased or maybe some refurbishing of a home that he's purchased. So it, it, they sort of form like a friendship. Um, and Simon has never has experimented with other men like in college, but he was married to a woman um, and he's starting to have like these more than friends type of feelings for Trevor. Trevor is is gay. He's always known that he's gay. Um, so so yeah, they sort of start this friendship and more of a, a relationship starts to to bloom. It was like I said, it was an okay story. It was very short and sweet. I gave it three stars. Okay, last but definitely not least, we have Horror Hotel. Uh, this was, I picked this up um, at, to read uh, on our, either on our way home or on our way to, but I, fin I ended up finishing Don't You Dare on, on the way, and um, I finished this or read this coming home from, from Disney. Uh, so yeah, Horror Hotel, this is by Victoria Fulton and Faith McLaren. This was, like, I, I enjoyed this, like, Words can't come out. Words are hard. Um, I, I really wasn't expecting is what I think I'm, I'm trying to say. I wasn't expecting to enjoy this because I haven't heard a lot of things about it. Um, it drew me in when it was first released just because the cover is just stunning. Um, and it was about a group of, of kids that had a YouTube channel where they um, go to like haunted locations. Uh, because one of the one of the one of the kids in the group, um, she can be she can see dead people. Basically, she's so, sort of psychic, as well as not not necessarily psychic. She she can sort of read read you like a uh, like a medium, um, but she can also see dead people and read them a little bit. They call themselves the Ghost Gang. Uh, they are Chrissy, Chase, Emma, and Kiki. They were all adorable. We get. We get their point of views throughout the book. Uh, so, like I said, they also they started this YouTube channel and they become a little famous. And they have their eye on like one of the YouTube plaques, and they really think going to this hotel is going to take them over that edge to get them that plaque. So, this is like a famous hotel, a uh, famous haunted hotel. They're going to. Um, I don't remember the name of it in the book. Um. But anyway, there all there there was also like a recent murder of a young woman who is also sort of a social media star. I guess I think she was more of a of a blog, a famous blogger more than say like Instagram or YouTube. Um, but she was she was murdered in this hotel. So they're there for part of partly that story and partly the story of the hotel. And it was it was weird because it not weird but I was I was freshly from Disney so I'm thinking Tower of Terror here like it, it was giving me Tower of Terror vibes uh, so I was really loving it it takes place on Halloween so it was a great Halloween read so yeah events events happen in the hotel it was just it was just fun it was entertaining I had a great time I think I that I gave it. I gave it four stars. Um, there was there was something about it that didn't push me over the edge for that. Like maybe even that four and a half star. Like like I just like I couldn't because I wanted more of that part of the book and it wasn't giving it to me. But anyway, overall it was entertaining. I had a good time and honestly I I couldn't put it down. Like on our way home, usually I kind of put put it down and like look around me and see where we're at and talk to Michael a little bit. No, my head was like completely in this book. I really enjoyed it. All right, y'all, that is it. Uh, those are all the books I read between the months of September and October. Let me know if you've read any of those books or if you got any uh, recommendations maybe from any of these books. I really highly recommend this. This is like a YA type of horror, just entertaining. It 
slasher film kind of thing, Tower of Terror. I really had a good time with it, so I really highly recommend that one. I haven't really heard any anything about it uh, on on YouTube, and it really just excited me. You know, that I found like a fun a fun read to like end the month of October on. So yeah. Anyway, that's it. Thank y'all as always so much for watching. Hope you're all doing well out there. Hugs from me all around as usual. Uh, and I'll see y'all very soon in a new video. Bye y'all.